Experience 2021. I hope you're having fun. My name is Mathieu Germain. I am the MRP product owner uh, at Odoo, which means that I'm responsible for the manufacturing, the maintenance, the repair, the quality, and the PLM app. And today I will focus on PLM and specifically with what's new in this V15. But before we start, I would like to ask uh, my colleague here, Marcelo, if you actually know what is PLM. Um, hi, Matthew. Um, I don't know, uh, people's life uh, management, uh, price uh, linked to myself, uh, <laughs> people launch machine, uh, I don't know. Well, not really. So before we start, let me just go back on the concept a little bit to make sure that we are all on the same page. So usually when we talk about PLM, and for those of you who are more familiar with the topic, we look at this graph or a variation of that graph at least. In this graph, there are various stages. So why um, are, these, are these stages there? So typically when you, are, when you want to create a new product, this is the stages that you will follow. So before uh, you come up with an idea, there has to be the identification of a need. So once you have identified the need for a specific product, then you will design um, your solution to that product. Then once you're happy with the design, you will go through testing, testing again perhaps, and testing again until you're happy with the result and you can manufacture and commercialize that product. But PLM doesn't stop there. Once you have a product on the market, just like Odoo every year, you have to maintain it and make it better and better every time. So this is what we mean by the maintain uh, section over here. Once you come up with a new version of the product, you have to make sure that the last version is no longer maintained um, and no longer manufactured uh, so that you can focus on that new version uh, that you have come up with. So Marcelo, this is what we mean uh, with PLM. So you mean that if I want to make an airplane, a paper airplane, I need to uh, get a need, which is my plane, design it and test it? Exactly, until you are happy with the result. And then you can go on and make it. So why might you want to rely on such um, a, why would you want to rely on a software to look after such a, such a concept? So for me, uh, there are three main reasons. So first of all, traceability. So whenever uh, you are going to make decisions about design, um, make decisions about specific um, aspects of the product, you want to make sure uh, that um, this is tracked in your system and uh, that every decision that has to be that has been made um, is easily followed by someone who did not work with you on that project or that would like to receive all of the information before they make an approval uh, decision. And therefore, it is nice to have all of that information gathered into one uh, model. Then um, it also it it uh, communication in these um, in 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 these uh, phases are very important. Also, there are going to be a lot of departments working together uh, to come up with a design, to come up with a result that um, is satisfying uh, for you. And if all of these people from various departments are working on the same software on the same model, then it is much easier, and therefore it is much. Uh, it, 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 a decision will be made much faster about um, the approval or the rejection of a specific change, which allows you as a company to um, make your products faster and uh, to innovate perhaps a little bit faster than the competition. So enough uh, talk uh, for today. Um, I will now show you what I mean by jumping into a short demonstration. So now um, I will go into my PLM, um, Odoo's PLM uh, module, and I will show you uh, what I have just uh, discussed with you. So the PLM module you find it here together with our other uh, manufacturing apps. Um, when you open it, you see the various ECO types. So here we see that we have uh, two types at the moment. We have a type uh, which we call new product introductions. We also have a type which we call product updates. If you want to create a new type, it's very easy. You simply go into the configurations of your PLM module and you can create here a new type very easily. Let's say that there's a new secret project in your company and you want to create an ECO type dedicated to that. You simply go here and you can create your new project like that. You can even assign an email alias to it so that new ideas uh, automatically create new suggestions in your project. Once you are done with your type, 
you will see it appearing here with the rest of the others and you can even give it a new color if you want to differentiate it to the other ones. So now let's focus on the product uh, ECO type uh, that I have already created for you, which is uh, over here. So when you open your ECO um, uh, type, you see your ECO um, structure, which can be different in every uh, different ECO type. And you see the ECO, um, the ECO, the different ECO changes. So what we mean by ECO is an engineering change order um, for your information. So here uh, we see that we have a few uh, in our new, prog uh, new column and we have one in the in-progress column. Here you see always the name of the product that is concerned. You see the date at which it would ideally uh, be applied, the change that, that you have come up with. And you see the status over here, which you can customize uh, in every column. At the moment here, for instance, uh, the red uh, status means that it's the specification is not ready to go um, and we can perhaps play it back to in progress so that the person who has come up with it can um, work on a second uh, version. If you want to create an approval uh, st uh, status, it's very easy. You can simply create an approval uh, status over here and I can even combine it with um, a, um, a apply um, state. Okay, so um, here this approval and apply state will allow you to configure uh, different levels of approval uh, that will uh, be responsible for applying uh, an ECO change or not. So what we, uh, the way you do that is simply by configuring um, your ECO uh, column and you can add here, for instance, the engineering manager like that, who is perhaps a Mitchell admin in this case. And you can uh, here select the level of approval uh, that they need. So in V15, we have this new thing where uh, every time an approval is requested on an ECO, it will create an activity for that specific person. So again, uh, here, that person will be notified faster and will be able to make the review faster uh, than before. So here, uh, we can also, for the state itself, say that in this state, we will allow changes to be performed. Um, and again, uh, you can change the connotation of these different stages uh, here if you like. Okay, so here um, we see that we have a change in progress. Uh, we can we see that it's important. So perhaps as Mitchell admin, I would like to review and uh, perhaps approve uh, that change. I simply go here. I will see the note about the ECO, what is trying to be done over here. I will see here the full traceability about who discussed what, with whom, if there are documents, I can uh, change them over here if I want to. And I will see that this change needs to be applied today. So let's review it and see if we are happy with it. We go into the document section and we see that a new image has been uploaded for that product uh, that will appear on the product uh, template um, because it's a product type ECO, which is over here. Um, and we are happy with that. So we can simply approve and apply the changes if we want to. Okay, so this is done. And you can see here that it has automatically moved to the effective um, stage because we have indicated here in the effective uh, column that this is the final stage. All right. So. Now, um, let's consider a use case together uh, that we will cover uh, shortly right now. So the use case I would like to cover with you um, is the use case of the computer uh, that you see over here. And uh, for this use case, I would like to focus on the bill of material. So here, if you look at the bill of material of the computer, it's a simplified bill of material, of course, um, but it has some interesting elements. So first of all, you have all of the components over here. You have the operations over here, simply an assembly and a packing operation. And if you want to look at everything together, you can simply uh, look at that over here. You see that we have a sub-assembly for the motherboard uh, here also. Okay, um, so here I see that for this uh, ECO, there is uh, a change uh, that has been um, started. I can put it in progress, I can work on it. Uh, over here, by simply clicking on Start Revision, Odoo will open both uh, the BOM and the document um, that are linked uh, to this um, to this uh, to this bill of material, and I can start editing if I want to. So here, if you want to edit the BOM, you will see an archived uh, version of the BOM by default. Why is that? It's because at the moment, as long as you have not um, applied the ECO, this new BOM that you are creating at the moment will stay still archived. Once you apply it, the old one will be archived and this one will become your new bar. All right, so we see here in the title of the ECO that uh, we will here um, apply two changes. We will change uh, the two uh, body parts that we have over here with the second generation. So we can simply go ahead and do that right here. We have the base case body, which will replace with the second generation body. And here we have the screen body, which will replace with the second generation body. 
Okay, still one unit of each, of course. Um, and if we go back to ESO, we see here um, a summary of the changes that have been applied. We see that the quantities are correct. We see that we removed the old ones and we added the new ones. So now I will put it in this um, approval uh, column. I can still approve it right now. You notice again this activity, which has been um, marked uh, as done right now. And I can uh, simply, let's say I'll just cancel this uh, last activity that I had planned before. I am not going to apply the changes just yet because I would like to show you something new in V15 about the way we apply changes. So here, um, let's say that this uh, redesign of both the top and bottom uh, parts of the body um, allows us to use new screws, screws that are lighter and more resistant. So I will simply say use Gen 2 screws for a computer. And here uh, you can select your computer and the right bomb. Note that the product can have several bombs, so it's very important to select the correct one over here. You can save, you can start the revision, and again, you simply go into the bomb over here, and you can uh, change the screws with the new ones. And you save over here. You go back to the ECO, you see that the change has been recorded. Again, the quantity is correct. We removed uh, the line with two screws, we added the one new one. So let's put it straight into the apply uh, section and approve it. Now, as I said, I would like to show you something new in V15. So usually when you do ECOs, you will do a lot of ECOs for the same product, and on one specific date, you would like to apply all of these changes at once. You don't want to go into each one individually. So now, and if there are no conflicts with the ECO changes, in which case you would need to apply a rebase, um, in this case there are no conflicts because we're only looking at the components, we can simply select the ECO changes that we want uh, over here, and we can apply them in bulk. And if I go back to my master data over here and I look at my computer, you will see that the bomb here has been updated with both the new generation screws and the new um, parts. So now um, let's perform another type of ECO change. Again, uh, we will create a new one and we'll say that the, the, these new, uh, the new design of these parts actually changes the way in which we manufacture that component. So let's look at, take a look at the operations and more specifically the steps in which we're going to manufacture uh, that product. So here I'm simply going to say update um, the operations of the assembly. So it's just like me when I'm doing my airplane here. I just did everything, but I did hand manually. So Udo makes it easier for us. Ah, it flies. Exactly. So now that you have built a second airplane and a third airplane, you have noticed uh, what was wrong with the initial ones and you have modified the bomb and the way perhaps you manufactured the plane accordingly. So that's why the PLM solution might be a good fit for you, Marcelo. In this case, here, I will show you how we can update the operations very easily also. So again, I change the product. I take my computer, I save, I start the revision, and now in this time we'll go into the operation section of the bomb. Here, what I would like to do, uh, first of all, is that I would like to say that uh, some of these steps are not necessary anymore because the quality of these new parts are so good that we don't need to check the body parts quality anymore and we do not uh, need to check for noises anymore either. Okay? So I can simply go ahead, take these two steps and delete them. However, maybe I want to add a new step, or perhaps I simply want to change um, this uh, type of, uh, of, of, of step to a measure one, okay? I can simply change it over here and say that the distance over here should be 22, and you can put a range, as you know, and simply save over here. If you go to your ECO, uh, you will see that the operation changes for the steps have been recorded. Again, this is something new in V15. Before, we only had um, a record about the changes that were made on the top level operations. So this you will still have. So if we go to the operation over here and we say, well, these changes take less time than um, to make the assembly process, you can simply save uh, that operation time over here and save it over here. Okay, so if you go back to the operation, you see that we now have a new line, which is not associated to a step. It's simply the main operation assembly. Uh, and we have taken out 20 minutes of that time. Again, you can make your products faster. So I will not show you right now, but something which is really cool also in this V15 PLM is that the editing of the documents of the bomb can be also uh, specifically edited here versus the product form if you take a product type ECO. Okay, so remember, uh, this is very important. When you, when you select an, an apply-on, uh, bill of materials ECO. The documents that are here will only be the ones related to the bill of material that you have here. If you take a product-only ECO type, you will modify the product on the product form. 
Okay. So that's it. Um, I will now move on again before, like, my to my approve and apply uh, changes uh, section. Here I mark my approval as done. Today I'm both the engineer and the approver, uh, and I can simply uh, mark my activity as done. Okay. So now we have modified Orbom quite uh, quite a lot. Let's have a look at uh, how it looks like in our product data again. I go into my computer. Here I have my bill of material and um, if I go to my operations, I see that I only have four steps, where before I had six. Um, and I also see that the version has been updated to the fourth uh, version. If you want to only do uh, incremental uh, version changes, then you will have to do one ECO with all of the changes combined, which you can, of course, do. Right? You can combine the modification of components and the modification of operations within the same ECO, if you, if you like. And again, um, you don't lose any of the old uh, product information. If you want to look at all the versions of the product, it, they will always uh, be recorded for you over here. Here you have version 3, and here you will have uh, version 2, uh, version 1, for uh, your um, traceability purposes. All right, so um, now I would like to show you something actually even cooler than that, because we didn't stop there. So. You know that um, the bill of materials are uh, well, very uh, well integrated uh, with the manufacturing orders. Of course, when you do a manufacturing order, you will always choose a specific bill of material which you will manu manufacture. So imagine that um, the uh, uh, engineering department has just come up with a new bill of material, um, but the manufacturing department is not aware of it. However, um, what we have now in, uh, in V15 is that whenever there is a new version of the bomb available, you will be notified on the manufacturing order. So over here, you see the bill of material, and you see a small uh, information icon over here for your confirmed manufacturing order. And uh, here, Odoo will tell you, well, note that there's a new version of the bomb that is available. You can simply cancel this one and create a new one, and Odoo will use the latest bomb, of course. Um, and if your manufacturing order is in draft, you can go even further and you can update uh, the bomb with the latest uh, components and the latest operations in order uh, to make sure that you're producing the right thing. All right, so you see here we have just updated the bomb and it has um, taken, the, taken the new um, components and adapted also uh, the operations. Well, Mathieu, you have done changes in computers, in batteries, uh, screws. I took a lot of time to do three airplanes here, but at least they fly. I'm going to change it to the... <laughs> Great, Marcelo. I'm really happy that you enjoyed that. And if you have any questions, um, please don't hesitate. For you also, uh, there's a Q&A coming uh, just after this talk, and I'd be happy uh, to answer any questions you might have. In the meantime, enjoy your do experience and talk to you soon. Hi, Mathieu. Hello, Nicolas. First of all, thanks. thanks a lot for the presentation. As always, it was very professional and very clear. Um, so the first question I want to ask before going to the Q&A with our viewers is, according to you as a specialist, what is the main improvement of the PLM application? Okay, um, so actually for V15, in my opinion, um, for PLM, there are three um, main uh, changes. The first one um, is the clear separation um, about changes that you apply on, um, on product templates, so the actual product, and the bill of materials. So um, you can now uh, target specific bill of materials if your product has several, you can target a specific one um, and manage uh, those document updates separately uh, than the product template. This is the first big change. The second big change, big change is the one I showed in the demonstration, is the fact that you can apply several uh, ECO changes at once by selecting um, yeah, uh, several at once from the list view um, and applying everything at once. If you're working on a big uh, product uh, revamp, uh, it might be useful to just apply everything at once. Um, and then, of course, um, what I really like personally is the link with the manufacturing app, where if you have a draft or a confirmed manufacturing order, um, you will be notified. Um, and in the case of a draft manufacturing order, before you confirm uh, your manufacturing order, you'll be able to update your bomb um, and work with the latest uh, version uh, that is available. Thank you very much for the, for the answer. Uh, we have a question from Alexandre Fayol. Um, is it possible to record changes in the routings and quality checks in the PLM and see the differences as for bomb lines? Mm -hmm. So indeed, um, all of the changes that you make on the routing, which we now call operations uh, in uh, V14 and V15, and on the quality checks, which uh, we, re we, we, we mostly refer to as manufacturing steps um, in um, 
in, man in, in, in manufacturing um, will be recorded in uh, your operation changes uh, tab on your ECO. Um, the changes that we record for the operations um, is uh, typically the time uh, that uh, uh, an operation would last if you delete it or if you add a new one. For the steps, what we record is the type um, of a step that it is. Is it um, a uh, measure step? Is it a, a picture step? Uh, is the worksheet step and if you create or if you delete steps you will also now be notified uh, with v15 in uh, the eco um, 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 box that i that i mentioned perfect um then we have a question from elmar uh, will it in v15 when you apply an echo on products actually create a new still archived product activate it and archive the old one like it's in the bomb to manage a different version on stocks, if you understand well the question. I think I understand. Uh, if um, it's unclear, uh, my answer is unclear, just uh, you can always come to our uh, logistic uh, channel also and ask me again. But um, yeah, so the principle about uh, the products and the bombs is the same. Uh, so as soon as you apply an ECO, it will archive uh, the old uh, version of the product and uh, it will um, de-archive the current version of the product that you are working on. Perfect. And thank you for your answer. I think Alexandre uh, really enjoyed your answer and that was exactly what he was looking for. Cool. Um, then we have a question uh, from Nathan. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you set effective effectivity dates to allow changes to take place in the future in the ECHO? Can you tie changes to existing stock to ensure that existing stock Ex existing stock, sorry, is depleted before applying updates. Mm -hmm. So you can set indeed um, effectivity dates on your ECO. Please note that they are only indicative. It will be just um, an indication of when you are supposed to apply uh, these ECO changes and you can group by effectivity date and apply, perhaps even mass apply the changes on this date. Um, and with regards to the question to the stock, no, there is no uh, link between the PLM and the stock levels uh, at the moment. Perfect. And then we have a question from Emric. This is something we discussed uh, before together about the conflict. Uh, what happens if we merge BOM and if there is conflict in an ECHO? Okay, so if there is a conflict um, in, a, in an ECO, um, typically uh, a conflict could be that you are editing the, for the product the same line. Say in one ECO, you will, you will say I need five screws. In the, another ECO, you will say no, I need six screws. Six screws. Um, or editing uh, the same operations of a bomb. Um, so if you start uh, changing the bomb of uh, the operations uh, of a bomb um, and then create a new ECO and edit the operations again, Odoo will, will be confused uh, because um, it will identify a conflict um, based on uh, the initial uh, bomb that you had for operations, for instance, the sequence in which you want to uh, do your operations and for the quantities I just mentioned before. So in these cases, actually, even the mass supply will not work um, because it will ask you to resolve those conflicts first. Um, so all of the changes uh, that will not be applied will stay uh, in your um, in your column where you're supposed to apply the changes. You will see um, a new button at the top of your ECO that will um, tell you that um, you can just simply click uh, on, the, on, on, on the resolution of the conflict and uh, Odoo will resolve the conflict for you according to what it has noticed in the change. Or you are also notified of uh, the conflict on uh, the actual ECO um, and you can then change your ECO as a consequence um, and then apply the changes uh, manually. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mathieu. Then we have another question from Alexandre. Um, is it possible to have automatic propagation when a new version of components is created and this impacts some assembled products using this component? Is it possible to have automatic propagation? I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, no, I'm not sure I understand the question. So please feel free to, uh, to, to join me in the logistics channel um, and uh, we can talk about uh, your, your issue in more detail if you like. It's not always easy, of course, to understand all the questions like this. Um, then Alexandre has another question. Alexandre is very active. Yeah. Uh, are we still limited to uh, integ integrate versions? Often my customer wants a major or minor version because the impact of minor changes are different from major Major yes, changes. actually, that's that's a very good question. And at the moment, you are still limited uh, to uh, integer uh, values indeed. Um, but we are working on uh, making a change for uh, the new versions. Uh, so keep in touch and um, and hopefully uh, uh, we will be able uh, to resolve that uh, soon. It's not as easy as it sounds, uh, so um, but it, we, are, we are working on it. Thank you very much. Then we have a question from Paul. Um, is there some way to tie this back to the marketing related app in Udo? 
uh, example, can we tie it to focus groups better with specific customer service? No, at the moment there is. Oh, hi Paul, by the way. Uh, at the moment, there is no um, uh, there is no link uh, with the marketing uh, app so for doing Fiala. All right. Then we have a question from Elder. Uh, what if the MO is already in progress with confirmations done? How the updates bomb will work? So if the MO is already in progress, um, you will not receive a notification because you might have already consumed uh, components. Um, you might have already, you know, almost finished your your production. Um, the notifications will only appear if the MO is either in a draft or in a confirmed uh, status. Perfect. Then we have a question from Thomas. Is it possible to group more ECN into a batch for a bicycle? You need a change bomb for frame as for wheels at the same time batch as they are related. Mm -hmm. um, I, if I understand your question uh, correctly, um, what you could use in that case, maybe the tags uh, field uh, that you have on your ECO to group uh, similar uh, ECOs together. Uh, you can also use the group by uh, function uh, that uh, is in the PLM uh, module and group your uh, ECOs uh, per product and then by tag to make sure that you're working in these batches that you that you mentioned. Um, otherwise, feel free to to join us and in the logistic channel and we we can discuss further uh, if you if you like. Okay, perfect. Then we're going to go through the last questions because I think we're going to run out of time. But afterwards, if you have any more questions, uh, Germain, if it's fine for you, you're gonna, you'll be able to join the room. We're going to put the link in the chatter. So, of course, feel free to, to, keep, to, to keep asking your questions and Germain will be delighted to answer them. Um, so, the last question is from Sami. When you cancel an MO uh, and there is a multi-level bomb, are the child MOs also cancelled? Um, it depends on the configuration of your uh, final uh, product. Um, at the moment, uh, it's it is it is well. It, it just depends on the configuration, and it's not really a question related to PLM. Um, we are we are working on this scenario actually. Um, but if you're not working in what we call an MTO uh, environment, which means that all of your uh, child bombs and and main bombs are uh, have a very strong link together. Then the short answer okay. is no. I think um, now we're going to have to stop. And oh. uh, I'm sorry to, okay, to, to no cut worries. you off, but uh, uh, so you can join the the link and uh, join Jamai in the room. Thank you very much for okay. your attention. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Have a have a good day.